What's good, you guys? It's your boy Ben Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Hope y'all been having a good week thus far, and hope y'all have been staying warm and staying safe out there as we prepare for the holiday season. But you knew I was going to talk about this. So the big news that came out this weekend is Deion Sanders is officially the new head coach of Colorado. And this has been going viral all over the place, and people are going up in arms. They are literally just crying their eyes out, calling Deion Sanders a traitor, you know, a sellout, all this other crazy nonsense that really does not make any sense to me. Now, I want to personally say this, too, that I don't mind the decision that Deion Sanders made because at the end of the day, he owes Jackson State absolutely nothing to them. Zip, zilt, nada. Because before before he decided to take on the head coaching job at, at Jackson State, what was Jackson State way before he came? What was the HBCU schools and the SWAC conference to like before Deion Sanders came in into the fray and resurrected not just the school, but the conference itself? Nothing. They were literally nothing before him. So he absolutely owes nothing to them. Now, I've been reading a lot of tweets from people talking about the fact that, you know, that it was Deion Sanders' job that resurrected HBCU schools and bring all the black athletes to these college, to these black colleges and stuff like that. And it just literally made me laugh. And it really illustrates to the point to me that why are you guys invested in these black colleges now when they were pretty much presented there ages ago before Deion Sanders came in into the fray? What was your investment? What was your money to help? build rebuild and restructure these black owned colleges like it really just did not make any sense to me but there's more information that i've been you know looking into this before i did this video now deon sanders had only one year left in his contract and he was going to honor that the one the final year of his deal but apparently there was a lot of issues between him and the state of Mississippi that really forced his hand. Now, keep in mind, we're talking about Jackson, Mississippi here. We have to remember that Jackson, Mississippi right now is going through a very terrible water crisis right now where people are not getting clean water, sanitated water. It's becoming it's becoming perhaps the worst water crisis since Flint, Michigan. And we have to remember that Jackson State is in Mississippi. All right? So, he was going to honor that final year of his contract. But when he tried to set up a meeting with the governor of Mississippi and the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, they were pretty much unresponsive. And they showed their true colors that they were not willing to tackle the issue that is really in front of them right in this present day. And it literally forced Dion his hand. And he tried his hardest to try to plead with them to try to fix this to the surrounding areas of the water situation. And they fumbled the ball literally, and he got tired and frustrated with it. And when you look at this entire thing in its totality, would anyone feel frustrated if you have people in government who are consider who are basically racist? Let's be real about that. Just want to point that little nugget out there. But here's the deal. When you have two representatives of local, representatives of government one from the state level one in the local level that are literally refusing to have any you know contact with you any level of communication to try address the most important issues at hand here you would be frustrated yourself and what J Deion sanders did at jackson state is parallel is the greatest coaching job i've ever seen on the college level by far and he deserves that promotion more than anything else. He owes Jackson State absolutely nothing. And another thing, too, that people have to recognize. If the donors and the people that are representing Jackson State cared about their football program or care about their university so much, why didn't they, they didn't invest more money into their programs? And more importantly to this, people try to label Deion Center as like the king at HBU, HBCU schools. But what really Ill, what really killed my uh, credibility with these arguments is what literally killed the credibility of these arguments, I should say, is when they tried to put Deion Sanders at the top of the pedestal in the SWAC conference and also 
in the HBCU schools to try to lead them into the lead them into something. When you also have other HBCU schools that did not invest in their athletics or in their in their academic programs, and literally they tried to look to Dion to lead the way, and that's really it's really hypocritical to me how people would try to label him in that sense. So I don't have an issue what Dion decided to do. It's really it's really what any other coach at any level would do. Listen, and here's the other, and here's another side of this thing I think people need to realize. Coaches are looking to try to invest not just within their ability, but within themselves, but they're looking out for them for their families as well. I guarantee you that. That Dion is looking to get into the get into coaching the NFL. Now, keep in mind, the NFL has had their issues when it turns to hiring black coaches, which institutes the Rooney Rule, which means that every team must interview a black coach for their hiring process. But I think it has to go more more enforceful to that because there's only about two black coaches I can think of: Mike Tomlin of Pittsburgh, and I think was it. Lovey Smith, I believe, who's also coaching in the NFL. I just forgot which team it is. Let me check real quick. So Lovey Smith, I know he's coaching in the NFL right now for the Houston Texans. There you go. That's what I was thinking of. So yeah, there's only at least two or maybe three uh, black coaches in the NFL right now that are literally coaching teams. The most, the majority of them are white. So. I wouldn't be surprised that Deion Sanders is looking at an opportunity to build his coaching resume to try to get into the NFL. And listen, people know that this man is one of the greatest defensive players in the history of football when it comes to athleticism, speed, agility, and just the IQ for the game. The man is named, nicknamed primetime for a reason. The man is a student of the game. So it w- it didn't surprise me at all how much success he was able to achieve in Jackson State. And plus, he owes absolutely nothing to that school. You they should be they should be rewarding him for all the work that he's put into that put into Jackson State. And they pretty much gave him nothing in return. I would be upset myself because if I'm putting in 3 years of of outstanding seasons in college in college football, right? And I'm not getting rewarded for that success. I would feel some sort of way too. And I know a lot of people, a lot of people in our society would have as well if they were in the same position. But unfortunately, that's not how our society works. People like to react to things off of hearsay, off of, you know, one little tweet or news clipping or something, instead of looking at the entire thing from his perspective. I don't blame Dion for making this decision. In fact, it's just a, it's just basically a business move that he's gonna that he's basically gonna use it down the line to try to get himself better opportunities to coach. And I'll tell you this too: you better be careful about Deion Sanders in terms of his ability to recruit, because the people that he was bringing into Jackson State were some of the best athletes I think college football has seen in a while. And now you put him in in the Pac-12 in Colorado, which is one of the uh, top power conferences they're not in the same level as the big 10 or the sec of course but you put them in there in the pac 12 especially when it comes to schools that he'll be facing against like the usc's the ucla's the oregon's the baylor's i'm telling you that he's gonna have he's gonna have tremendous opportunities to prove what he can do from not just the, from the x's and o's from the coaching level but motivation but in terms of recruiting and getting the and getting the best out of his players so I salute Dion for making this decision. Do what's best for your family. Do what's best for your coaching legacy. You owe he owes absolutely nothing to Jackson State. And as I said before, Jackson State missed the ball in this one. They could have had a greater opportunity to really invest themselves in their football program and take their college program to a whole nother level that they'd never seen before in a long time. But as I said before, you think about the fact of the water crisis and Donors not investing in their football program, you know what I mean? And the frustration that was building, I don't blame Deion Sanders one bit for making this decision. So salute to Deion, much respect, and I wish you all the best in your time in Colorado. But I'm telling you, he's making his path to try to get into the NFL. And if he performs the same way he did in 
it in Jackson State when he gets into Colorado, I'm telling you, it won't take long before an NFL team decides to give him a chance to be their head coach and possibly their general manager too because of his ability to scout talent and evaluate players. So I'm telling you, the sky's the limit for this man. So if you're an NFL team right now, you better keep your eye on him and you better make sure that you get your hands on him first before somebody else does. But that's just my two cents. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And with that, I'm out. Peace.